Hi, I'm Andy from Rolling Dice Show. We're here at Essenspiel 2015, and I'm with Eric Lang. Hi, Eric. Hello. Um, we're here to talk about Blood Rage, uh, one of your latest games that I know absolutely nothing about. So, Eric, can you please take us through the game? Uh, internally, we call it Blood Rage. <laughs> uh, it is... Uh, it, it It's sort of heavy metal Vikings. Yep. So, because... Who doesn't love Vikings and metal? Even if you don't like metal, you like you like everyone likes metal Vikings. Vikings. They do the head twirling, and all that's cool. So um, this game is about uh, is about the Viking myth of Ragnarok. It is the end of the world. Um, the world is actually being destroyed province by province, and we even have little tokens for that. <laughs> uh, and you guys are Viking clans released from Valhalla to pillage what's left of the world as it's being destroyed. Uh, you do that by uh, by putting guys on the map, uh, pillaging, killing each other doing sacred quests to hold on to places and uh, sticking around in provinces that are about to explode and dying gloriously. All of that adds translates into glory. You play uh, for three ages. At the end of the third age, whoever has the most glory wins. Yep. Um, the core to the game is uh, a little booster drafting mechanic. Um, yep. uh, I've, call, I've been calling it Magic Gathering Booster Draft. It's not exactly that, but it's, I mean, you, everybody draws... I'm a big fan of trading card games, and I love Booster Draft. That's where this came from. That so, makes sense. Uh, everybody draws uh, eight cards at the beginning of each age, and then they draft them, pick one, pass them around. Yep. Okay. And these cards have to be everything to you. They're um, they are your battle cards, they're your quest cards, and they're also your upgrade cards. Look at that. <laughs> they're your upgrade cards that you um, th that you get to upgrade your clan with and customize them during the game. Uh, you only get six of them. Uh, and so you have to balance them very carefully. Battle cards help you win battles. Quest cards help you get lots of glory for holding places, which glory is how you win. And upgrade cards make you stronger in your pillaging engine. Oh, that's cool. The uh, <coughs> the model's absolutely fantastic. I think that should be yeah, noted straight away. The, so the models were done by... Um, so the art was done by Adrian Smith, models by Studio McVeigh, and, the, I mean, of Games Workshop fame, right? And um, they're... Like, blows my mind like when i saw the first the first time i saw it was uh, this guy that they showed me first uh, i saw he sent me a picture of this and i squeed like actually <laughs> squeed like you know the the way you would picture like you know your three-year-old daughter squeeing when they see sailor moon cartoons like that's yeah. exactly what i did um yeah no i can totally see why it, that looks absolutely fantastic it's it's awesome roar so you've got a collection of absolutely wonderful models are they all is it sort of asymmetrical sides? Do they have different abilities and different? They don't. Different well, they don't mm. start asymmetrically. Um, they they're they are different by. Um, I mean, they're different by look. But um, you start the very very first round when you draft. Yep. By the time you're finished your draft, you will be completely different. Okay. Yep. Um, I actually did. I had a version of this game earlier where everybody was asymmetrical to yep. start with, but it actually was a much poorer game. Uh, okay. It because it, it drove people into dr driving. Like, it made their strategies much narrower, and yep. it doesn't give you a lot of choices. You feel bad when you don't draft your clan's cards. Yep. I wanted it to be more open-ended than that and have a much bigger possibility tree. So, like, when you play this, when you play it, you get whatever you want. Fields wide open when you start with, and then your choices start to narrow as you draft yourself into strategies. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, it gives you, gives you a more freer opportunity. Um, how did this game begin? Like, did, you, did it start as a, as a Viking game you wanted to make, or is it... Just sort of the mechanics were there. How did yeah? How so did this come uh, to the final generally, for a lot of the big box games, I'm mostly inspired by theme or license or IP and stuff. And I actually designed a game uh, several years ago, also based on Vikings, but it was more of a Euro game, and yep. it wasn't. I didn't get it out of my system. I wanted to make it a, a big battle game with a lot that was centered on pillaging. And I mean, uh, I grew up on mythology, right? Yep. I um I. Uh, I have German relatives and stuff, so we learned a lot of the Saxon myths and the Gaelic myths and all that stuff. So uh, I love that stuff. And uh, my favorite apocalypse myth is the Viking one, right? Yeah. And I haven't seen... I've seen a fair amount of Viking games, so I haven't seen one that's actually based on the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, and that was... Everything at that point, I was like... It was very clear to me. I want to make a game about the end of the world, and you're just killing each other yeah. and having fun. And I want to make a game where, like, for Vikings, death... In mythologically, death is not that consequential. You die, you go to Valhalla, you drink some beer, you fight with <laughs> each other down there, and then you come back and you fight it and do it again. <laughs> good times. Uh, good times. It's like, how is that not a game? It writes <laughs> itself. <laughs> so when so the end of world comes, is it the same each time? Does, does, or is there like a... No, there are. So the, every province has a little... Uh, is There's a, one of these uh, destructo tokens. I don't remember what we call them. For every, uh, for every province, you shuffle them up. 
and you destroy one at well depending on how many players there are in the game yep. you destroy um, zero one or two of them right yep. away right so you flip this oh. like ah oh, and Lang this province is destroyed <laughs> it's gone right you got it <laughs> yep right that's oh, out of the what's game the point? and the game's gonna and then um, the game is played over three ages oh, yep. and you see ahead of time which three areas are gonna get destroyed oh, but okay. it's different provinces every game yep okay so that mixes it up. That's that's cool. Um, oh, sorry. And also, the things that the pillage rewards for each province are shuffled and moved around, so the board is different every time. You oh, perfect. Play. Yeah. So added more re replayability. Um, what are the little tokens on the bottom of the the models? What's oh, what's this that? is. Um, so this was a. Uh, this is actually a hundred percent a product choice, but I love it. I love the the. So. We, Cool Mini or Not has a lot of miniature gamers as its fan base, right? Um, and board gamers and miniature gamers have some similarities, but also some differences. Miniature gamers generally tend to like miniatures all in one color. It makes them easier to paint. Yep. They don't, board gamers want to have, are, you know, very focused on clarity, right? I want to know what, which guys are which. So just put these little rings on guys of the same color scheme. And it's it, intensely obvious when you're looking at the board who belongs to what. Like, there's a little color theory behind all this, but that's... Um, yeah. But and when you put them on the monsters, when you because uh, you can draft these cool guys and then they're yours for the rest of the game. So like you know this guy, Stone Giant, who's blue. Look what I've done. Very different from Orange Stone Giant, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, it was a. I don't remember where. Like uh, my producer David Preddy and I were discussing stuff like this, and we were looking for a solution, and that's where it came from. It's it's, it's a really cool solution, actually. I think it might. Coming more sort of miniature games in the future. Every game I'm doing has got <laughs> it. Yep. <laughs> Have you trademarked it yet? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Well, the, so we actually sort of stole this from uh, my game Arcadia Quest from uh, two years ago. They were like this, except they just weren't as easy to clip. Yep. These ones are a little bit easier. But the, having the hole in the middle really matters, right? Because yeah. you just you hold the fig and you just pop it out. Perfect. What um? Okay. What what's Blood Rage's like biggest selling point? If if you had to sort of the the thirty second pitch. End of the world. End, end nah. of the world. So, uh, what's this? I have a number of different pitches depending on who's uh, trying to play it because I try to put as many hooks in the game as I can. Yep. Um, it's Vikings fighting. It's Vikings pillaging, right? That's that'll be enough for most of my you know people who like Ameritreasure treasure games like like myself, right? The um, booster drafting is another big hook. It is the dra it's you game where you play you play draft and then you actually play a board game with the cards that you do. That's the mechanical hook to it. Um, the um, the other the, the innovative hook, the hook that's a little different from everything else, is that it's a battle game where dying is not only uh, dying is not only okay. In some cases, there are some strategies where you want to die. So there are several strategies, like the the Loki strategy in this, that actually uh, rewards you for dying better than anybody else and punishes people for killing you. That's so there's always, when you're playing this game, unlike any other battle game you play, there's always somebody at the group that really wants to die, and you have to make <laughs> sure that you're not just helping them win by killing them. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And when is Blood Rage out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, the Kickstarter um, fulfilled, it, it's actually fulfilling as we speak. Uh, they, okay. they, sh they shipped it right on time. They're really good about that. Um, it's Backers have their stuff. I think Asmodee just, this is one of uh, a German translation, so it's got to be coming very soon. Very soon. M a month, maybe. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on that, please. <laughs> That's fair enough. Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to chat about Blood Rage to us. Thank you very much, Andy. The One Direction of Interviewers. <laughs> thank you so much.